Today we have modern technology. Astronomers will tell you exactly when the moon will be born. So why is it that we need you know, local sightings if everything is based on technology? First of all, when we look at the hadith of the Prophet and the Imams peace be upon them, they made it very clear, Sum lil-ru'ya waftur lil-ru'ya. You have to start fasting when you see the moon. Islam, according to this understanding of many scholars, wants us to see the moon when it's visible. If the scientific calculations tell you with certainty when the moon is visible from ground level, we take it. But where is the problem, brother? The problem is scientific calculations tells you when the moon will be born and how much illumination there is. But they can't tell you with certainty in a lot of places where it can be visible. Because the visibility of the moon depends on many factors. A lot of them are weather factors, like humidity. How much humidity is in the air will determine whether the moon will be visible or not. The speed of the wind, for instance. The temperature, all that makes a difference. So that's why they give you a probability. And the scholars say if the map or the astronomical calculations give you confidence that let's say in the Halifax area or in this region, the moon is visible, we can go by it. Maybe there's just clouds and that's why we don't see it. But sometimes the astronomical calculations tells you it's a probability. We don't know. If it's clear conditions, if it's perfect conditions, if, 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 you could see it. That's where the problem is. So astronomers cannot predict these weather events, so they can't tell you with certainty whether the moon would be visible or not. And I myself have experienced it. Sometimes on the map, the astronomers say it should be visible. They don't say it with 100% certainty. We go and we look at the horizon and we, we, we can't see it. So we have proof sometimes that they cannot with accuracy tell you. Yes, in some regions they will tell you there's like 20% illumination. You must definitely be able to see it. That we accept. So that's one problem that, that the scholars have over here. But they all say, if it gives you atma'nan, confidence that you can see it, you can go by atma'nan. Now the question is why? Why does Islam want us to see the moon? I mean, Jibra'il could have come down on the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, the moon has been born, khalas, just start fasting. And then Muslims figure out, figure out a way, a scientific way. Why? Do we see the moon according to most maraja? Why does it have to be seen somewhere close by, depending on the you know, mabani of the fuqaha, their rulings, whether we have one horizon, multiple horizons, but why do we have to see the moon? My analysis is that Islam wants us to be connected to nature. The beauty of the religion of Islam to keep you always focused on the wonders of God. Don't be robots only dealing with technology and devices. Allah wants Muslims see the moon. It's mustahab to know the sunrise, the sunset, not just by looking at your watch. So you see al-madahir al kawniya the phenomena that exist out there in the atmosphere. Know the moon, when the moon will come. This keeps you connected to nature and that's healthy. Imagine if every Muslim studies about the moon, sees the timings of the moon, tries to see the moon. That connects you to the planets, to the stars. These, day, these days, my dear brothers and sisters, one reason why there's depression and loneliness, because we've isolated ourselves from nature. Back then, wallah, people would sleep one hour under the sky, all the depression goes away. وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحِ Allah says, I've decorated the sky for you with all these lanterns, but today you can't see them because of uh, pollution. What type of pollution? Light pollution. They call it light pollution, subhanAllah. Even Westerners, they call it light pollution because it doesn't allow you to see the grandness of the universe. So when the month goes around the calendar like that, that in itself connects you to nature. Every single day you're looking for these mazahir al kawniya That's the first part of it. The second part of it. If you know the Eid exactly on the solar calendar or by the birth of the moon, you will plan from now till the next hundred years. Right? From now you put the calendar every single date, Sha'ban, Eid, Ghadir, all of that. That's good for planning purposes because you know. However, it comes with negative consequences. 
We human beings sometimes in this world, we become like robots with a routine and we think we can plan everything and we're in control. I believe through the sighting of the moon, Allah is teaching us a lesson. Don't think you know everything and you can plan everything. I am the best planners. Wait till night of Eid to know the Eid. That is healthy, my dear brothers and sisters. That anxiety that you have, that you know, feeling of trying to wait for the night of Eid, it makes you submit your power to Allah. You feel there's a higher power deciding to eat for you. Think about this. Just think about this. Think of these two scenarios. From now I know next year, May 25, 2020 is Eid. Okay, that's nice. You can plan. You could take that day off from work from now. But the second scenario, tomorrow night or tonight you wait. Did people see the moon? You contact other communities, you stay in touch with other brothers and sisters. And then you wait. And then when you hear someone saw the moon or it doesn't, Wallahi, it connects you to the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You feel Allah is the one deciding things for you. It keeps you close to Allah.